Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. The BBC Micro shenanigans continue. I know I had some issues with the keyboard on this one, so I thought what I'd do is get the BBC B up to speed. And this is my original BBC B, and I'm going to open it up, and you're going to see. Uh, what's in it? When I say original, by the way, not my childhood one. That one is for a future episode, but this is my more recent adult BBCB. And uh, I had this interface in it. Have a look. And this is actually an old style version of this. And that's the uh, user port SD card interface I showed you last time. And this one is from apparently from LC Technology, if the camera will choose to focus, which which clearly, clearly won't. Don't worry, just take my word for it. Um, but this does seem to have a, a strange adaptation because you have this user port board here and then this SD card one kicking off. It might be just a general purpose board. Now, the problem with this is it doesn't fit in a master. Uh, obviously, this one fits in everything because it's a lot shorter. Um, and what I did is I took the disk image from this one because I thought this is a really good disk image compared to what I had, um, but it will not work. Uh, on this. So I put it on this SD card, plug that into the BBC B, but it won't boot because it is a different um, controller, this, the software. I'll, I'll have a check on it, but if I recall correctly, it's um, not using the same Turbo Spy or something, it's using a different one. So my intention is to pop the lid on that one, pull the chip out, UV erase it, and then program it back up with the same firmware that this is using, because I feel under the hood they're probably doing the same thing and they should work. And if not, it doesn't matter, I'll just program it back up again and it'll you know, be good as gold and we'll just have to use the old software that was on it. So the first thing to do, of course, is to open up your Beeb. Again, not really a problem if you're uh, slightly handy you'll have probably already done this and I'm just going to show you the inside of this one because I'm pretty sure that whoever developed that interface and, and kit used this one because this is the picture of the same BBC Micro um, this is the same BBC Micro that's used in all of the the pictures so it's, it's fascinating really this was uh, clearly they developed this interface on the BBC Micro sold a few and then sold their dev micro and it's a bit of a, a Franken a Franken beeb so it's got different parts it's clearly been serviced but if I recall the top half of the shell and the bottom half of the shell look like different models because the the imprint's slightly wrong but I love my Franken beeb because it's clean for a start and it's been very well looked after. So, oh gosh, I keep forgetting. All of our chips are under here, but look at this. This is actually a sideways RAM upgrade as well. This has got all the bells and whistles. So I'm just gonna unpop the uh, CD out. CD, am I mental? Keyboard, keyboard. I'm going mad. I'm going slightly mad. There we go. Get out of it. Again, I do apologize to all those people uh, watching in uh, YouTube land who criticized me last time for not being a real BBCist because the keyboard actually had its nuts and bolts still in there. They apparently shouldn't be in there if you're really doing hardcore stuff. I don't really want to disturb these clips. I should take a photo of where they are because they could easily poing out. So, ah, that's what I, that's what I wanted to see though. If you see here, We've got a chip that says Smart Spy on it and not Turbo Spy, which is what we're using. Now, I don't know the difference between them. I don't know which is better. I don't know which is worse. So I'm just going to have to go with what I've got right now, which is the uh, Turbo Spy in the other one. And that's what I'm going to copy. And have a look here. This is the Hyundai RAM chip that's being used as a sideways RAM. Isn't that cute? I think I did a pretty good job of that. Right, let's pop this out. So that's my chip extractor. I advise you get one of these for pulling chips because it makes life a lot easier. And now I'm going to go across and pull the same out of the master. You won't need to see that. It's not very exciting. We've got the Turbo Spy chip that's been extracted now from the master. I'm going to pop it in here because I think this is a good sanity check. Before we go any further, let's pop this in and we'll pop the um, old interface but with the new software on its SD card and see if it works. So that little experiment didn't work because it turns out the Spark Spy and the Turbo Spy are slightly different because the hardware is slightly different. And it's not a massive difference, but it's enough to make it that they're not compatible because the pins are different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Spark Spy ROM and I'm going to pull the 
UV arrays window on it and pop it in my UV eraser because there are other firmwares or ROMs online that I've noticed and I'm going to try the MMFS. After the ROM is erased, we just shove it in our EEPROM programmer. I'm using the Xgeku Pro. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but you'll find them on the internet. Then you have to load up the software, find the suitable ROM. There's a lot of files in the MMFS. Just refer to the GitHub listing and it does tell you which one to use for your particular hardware combination and really you just hit program and sit back and it does take a little while to program this it's quite a large large rom but once you get there really all you do is remove it from your programmer and shove it back into your bbc the same way you've seen me do quite a few times already now and then you just flick the power on and as if by magic you see this it boots up into the model b mmfs and if i do shift break Boom! And there we go. And I'm just going to take the camera back a bit so that you can see what we've got here. So we've got the two beeps here. The master's not connected. It's just got all the junk on it. That's the original Turbo SPI chip and the new interface that I'm going to put back in the master because the only one that fits. We've got the BBC B, and you can just about see in there the old uh, interface. Um, I decombobulated that. That's definitely set to the original in the MMFS software. And then I'm going to show you under the hood here. Sorry about all of this. I should be doing all these snazzy cuts, but I know you don't really care for those. It's not that much of a problem. And if we move the keyboard here, you can see poking in right there, that's the old ROM that's been reprogrammed in the UV eraser um, with the new software. So I'm really pleased actually, finally, I can get this one up and running. I'm gonna put the Pi Tube Direct back into this. Let's turn it back on again. Um, and then that way I can just continue my experimentation on it. If you can just see here, shift break, bang. So I'd really love to learn how to use that sideways ROM but I have a little sneaky extra for you, for you Beeb fans. It's been a bit of an adventure, I have to admit. I thought it was going to be easy to swap those things out, but it turns out there's an old interface and a new interface. That's the turbo and it's wired differently. And I think for my needs, the old interface is absolutely fine, which is what we see here. So just to get everything working up to speed, I reprogrammed that chip with the latest MMFS. Um, which wasn't too difficult to do, you just have to look through the releases to make sure you've got the right ROM file for your machine and hardware combination. <laughs> okay, now the BBC Micro does give you the opportunity to have really good show and tell. So I'm going to show you something and I'm hoping you will be able to tell me something about this. This, um, judging from the writing on it, is a sideways RAM interface. You can see it has a VATA death cell here, a little bit of logic, and two, I'm a assuming our RAM chips. There's a blue fly lead to where it goes, I do not know. And a switch here, which may well be a right protect switch for the sideways RAM. I'm going to read off the chip number to you. It's a HM6264LP-15. Two of those. And then that single logic chip is an SN74LS00N. And there's really not much else on there. I'll see how close I can bring it to the camera before the camera refuses to focus. Not very close, unfortunately. Come on. It's looking for my eyes. That's the problem. You can see it right there. So if you know how I can hook this back into the machine, let me know and I'll give it a go. Boom! <coughs> oh. Yeah, sorry, you can't beat a bit of Daredevil, Dennis. I hope this uh, series kind of on the BBC is interesting you. It's certainly interesting me. Um, and I know at the moment, let's say, Christmas is always the time for the BBC Micro, so it's it's been about the right time. Uh, please let me know if there's any other videos you'd like me to do on this. I do have a couple more in the, in the, in the plan. Um, there's a um, CPC. CPM interface and some floppy disk drive interfaces I want to try in the near future. And of course, we've got to fix that Electron keyboard. Electron. Master keyboard. I don't have an Electron. Bye-bye. <laughs>